Last Sunday, NASA astronauts Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and astronauts Soichi Noguchi of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency were launched to the International Space Station on the first certified SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket propelled the Crew Dragon spacecraft into orbit to begin a six-month science mission aboard the space station. Less than 10 minutes later, the rocket booster returned to Earth and landed on the SpaceX drone ship to be reused on another mission. 27 hours after the launch, the Crew Dragon capsule, dubbed Resilience, autonomously docked with the space station. About two hours later, Hopkins and his crewmates opened the Crew Dragon's forward hatch and floated into the space station's Harmony module, beginning their six-month stay on the orbiting lab. So it was, uh, it was an amazing ride. I, I can't tell you uh, how excited we were when uh, that rocket lifted up the pad and, and then the last 27, 27 hours have, has gone really smooth, actually. On Thursday, the Falcon 9 booster arrived back on Florida's space coast with a lean after slid across the ship's deck in high winds and rough seas. According to Elon Musk, a few booster parts need to be replaced, but otherwise, the booster is in good shape. SpaceX aims to reuse the booster to launch the next Crew Dragon mission, tentatively scheduled to take off on 30 March 2021. It will mark the first SpaceX crew mission to fly with a reused Falcon 9 booster. Last Monday, a Vega rocket, developed by Ariane Space, failed during its flight leading to the loss of the payloads on board. The vehicle took off from Europe's primary spaceport in French Guiana, carrying two Earth observation satellites for Spain and France. At about eight minutes into the flight, the engine on Vega's upper stage ignited. Right after that, the rocket started to veer off course, and its altitude began dropping. After noticing the deviation, Ariane Space tried to establish a signal with the rocket, but ultimately couldn't connect, indicating that Vega had fallen out of orbit, destroying the two payloads on board. We have some news and unfortunately they are not good. We can uh, now uh, confirm that uh, the mission is lost. Analysis of the telemetry from the mission, along with data from the production of the vehicle, led the engineers to conclude that the rocket's thrust vector control actuator cables were inverted. The thrust vector control system pivots the upper stage engine nozzle to direct thrust, allowing the rocket to control its orientation and steering. The cabling problem caused the engine to move its nozzle in the wrong direction in response to the rocket's guidance system's commands. This resulted in the loss of control of the rocket. Ariane Space officials characterized the inverted cables as a human error and not a design problem. Rocket Lab took a step towards making its launch vehicles reusable, with the safe splashdown and recovery of an electron booster after it successfully took its payload to orbit. Rocket Lab's two-stage electron rocket lifted off from the company's New Zealand launch site on Friday, carrying 30 spacecraft to low Earth orbit on a mission called Return to Sender. Approximately two and a half minutes after liftoff, at an altitude of around 80 kilometers, Electron's first and second stages separated. Once the engines shut down on Electron's first stage, a reaction control system reoriented the stage to place it on an ideal angle for re-entry enabling it to survive the incredible heat and pressure. Five minutes after separation, dropping at about 1.5 times the speed of sound, a drogue parachute was deployed to increase drag and stabilize the first stage. Later a large main parachute was deployed in the final kilometers of the descent. The stage then splashed down about 650 kilometers off the New Zealand coast. Rocket Lab's recovery team will transport the stage back to Rocket Lab's production complex, where engineers will inspect the booster to gather onboard data. SpaceX founder Elon Musk congratulated the Rocket Lab team on Twitter after the successful splashdown. Rocket Lab eventually plans to snag falling booster out of the sky using helicopters, a technique it demonstrated this past March during a drop test with a dummy booster. The low-flying asteroid missed the Earth by only a few hundred kilometers over the southern Pacific on Friday, and it was not noticed until the next day. The asteroid, called 2020 VT4, was spotted 15 hours later by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Survey at the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii. The asteroid about the size of a small house is estimated to be 5 to 10 meters across. Its orbit brought it about the same distance from the Earth as the International Space Station, setting a record for the closest documented non-meteoric asteroid to pass by the Earth. 
According to experts, it would require an asteroid larger than 25 meters, but smaller than 1 kilometer, to do local damage to the Earth. If the asteroid had entered into Earth's atmosphere, it would have burned up, leaving a meteoric trail behind it. This encounter shortened its orbit, ensuring that this Earth crosser will make more frequent close approaches in the future. Sierra Nevada Corporation, an American aerospace company, says that the first flight of its Dream Chaser spacecraft to the International Space Station is now planned for 2022, after development delays caused by the COVID pandemic. The Dream Chaser is a reusable lifting body space plane, designed to resupply the International Space Station with both pressurized and unpressurized cargo. It is intended to launch vertically on the Vulcan Centaur rocket and autonomously land horizontally on conventional runways. During a media briefing on November 17, the company executives said that, despite the near-term delays in the assembly of the cargo spacecraft, they were still focused on a long-term plan that includes using cargo and crew versions of Dream Chaser to support a commercial space station by the end of the decade. According to the company, COVID-related restrictions prevented their engineers from being on site for structural testing of the spacecraft's cargo module, delaying the test and first flight. COVID-19 vaccine developed by Oxford University and AstraZeneca has produced robust immune response in elderly candidates above 60 years of age and is safe, according to a new study from mid-stage trials revealed on Wednesday. Preliminary findings published in the Lancet Medical Journal suggested that the vaccine candidate is safe, well-tolerated, and produces a similar immune response across age groups. In the study conducted on 560 healthy adult volunteers, the scientists found that the vaccine shot created strong signs of immunity in 99% of the elderly candidates. This essentially means that the vaccine is likely to protect some of the most vulnerable people in society. Older adults are a priority group for COVID-19 vaccination because they are at increased risk of severe disease and they tend to have poorer vaccine responses. It is worth mentioning that the vaccine phase 3 trials are still on to confirm the findings further. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket sent the latest Sentinel satellite, operated by NASA and European Space Agency, into orbit from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, on Saturday morning. The Sentinel-6 satellite is a global navigation satellite, that will provide critical data about sea level rise and climate change. Two minutes into the flight, the Falcon 9 first stage returned for a landing on the landing pad after lifting the satellite toward orbit. Later, the satellite separated from the Falcon 9 upper stage, marking the end of the mission.